Welcome back, Black Knight Scholars. Today, we're going to be talking about the Catholic Counter-Reformation. So the main question we're going to be deal with, dealing with today is how did the Catholic Church of the 1500s respond to the Protestant Reformation? And we're going to be using the acronym SINS. We're going to be using this acronym to answer this question. All right. At first, church leaders ignore the Reformation. They think it's a phase that will go away, but it doesn't. We'll talk about that later. But first, the early stages of the Reformation in the 1500s see popes arrest and excommunicate heretics. Excommunicate means to kick out. So the popes kick out the outlaws who are Protestants. And these church leaders refused to listen to the messages of Martin Luther and John Calvin and others who want the church to change. Pope Leo X is such a pope. He says this about Martin Luther and his followers. So Pope Leo X feels Martin Luther and others are just bothersome characters that will eventually fade away. That doesn't happen. One way the Catholic Church tries to stop Protestantism is using war. And one such war is actually a series of wars called the Thirty Years' War in Germany. From 1618 to 1648, the Protestant princes in northern Germany who practiced the teachings of Martin Luther go up against the Catholics in southern Germany. Who are these Catholics? Well, they are ruled by a family called the Habsburgs, and they rule the entire Holy Roman Empire at this time. This is Holy Roman Emperor Ferdinand, and Ferdinand closes all the Protestant churches in southern Germany. And the North German princes don't like this. War ensues. What's the end result? It's the Peace of Westphalia in 1648. All areas of Germany could now practice whatever form of Christianity they wanted. But that peace was the result of many, many years of hard fighting. One third of the German population died during the Thirty Years' War. This list shows you how devastating the Thirty Years' War was. Three million people died during this conflict. Another character enters the Thirty Years' War that we need to mention. His name is French Cardinal Richelieu. Cardinal means that he is a leader of the Catholic Church, and he is an example of a religious leader who has become a politician. Religion and politics, should they mix? He says yes. Cardinal Richelieu is Catholic, but convinces France's leaders to support the Protestants in this North German versus Catholic war. Why? Why do such a thing? France feels threatened by the Holy Roman Empire, so they want the North German princes on their side. Another religious war during the Reformation was the French Wars of Religion. From 1562 to 1598, who fought? The Catholics and the Huguenots, those in France who supported John Calvin. Why did they fight? Well, the Huguenots wanted equal rights. And there's the leader of France at the time, Henri IV. So the French Wars of Religion, how did it all start? The Massacre of Vassy. This is a picture of that massacre. You see people are fleeing. They are climbing walls. In 1562, in a town called Vassy, France, a group of Huguenots were worshiping their Calvinist beliefs in a barn. A local Catholic duke walks by and sees this meeting. He then locks the barn doors and sets the barn on fire, which kills 30 Huguenots and injures hundreds of others who are worshiping. This event sparks the French wars of religion and wars and battles 
ensue for more than 30 years. After all of this fighting, what happens? Well, there is a piece. It's called the Edict of Nantes, and it's the first major religious freedom law saying that the Huguenots can practice their religion in France without persecution. The Inquisition was another way the Catholic Church tries to strike back against the Protestants. The Inquisition was when the Catholic Church establishes a court system in each town in Europe to arrest, put on trial, and punish Protestant heretics, those outlaws. So you're a heretic, you're arrested, you have options. What's one option? You can admit your guilt to the Catholic Church and give names of other heretics who are criticizing the church, and you would be released or face a light torture or prison sentence. You wouldn't be put to death. And here is a man being tortured by members of the Catholic Church because of his heretical ways. If you were a Protestant heretic, you had a second option. Your second option was to refuse to admit your guilt to the Catholic Church, stay true to your beliefs, and face a public execution. This sketch shows you a heretic who is on stage in front of a town about to be executed. So the Inquisition was a violent time for the Catholic Church, but they felt if they showed this violence, it would strike fear in the heart of people and they would not criticize the church. The N in sins, no more false selling of indulgences and other abuses of power. This was said by Catholic leaders at meetings called the Council of Trent from 1545 to 1563. Here to the left, you see a painting of one of the meetings of the Council of Trent. The Catholic leaders eventually admit to themselves, we have to reform. We are corrupt. These indulgences, these tickets to heaven are not right. And there's one Pope who calls these meetings to order. It's Pope Paul III. And the Council of Trent was a way the Catholic Church reaffirms or reestablishes church doctrine, doctrine being a set of beliefs. What types of things were talked about in these meetings? What were the agreed upon reforms? First, priests were required to attend seminary. They had to be educated to be leaders. Bishops must regularly visit their dioceses Diocese is an area of land that the Catholic Church would oversee. Believe it or not, some bishops before this meeting did not visit the place they were supposed to oversee, showing their corruptness. The Council of Trent also said that the church must interpret the Bible, not the individual. The Council of Trent also set up the Society of Jesus. This was a Catholic missionary group that we'll talk about a little bit later, but it was important to spread the Catholic faith around the world. Lastly, the Council of Trent established the Index of Prohibited Books, first in 1559. They listed books and works by Protestants that had to be burned. They also said all Bibles must be in Latin. Society of Jesus I just mentioned that. They were also called the Jesuits, and they were basically a spiritual army. They were founded by this man, Ignatius of Loyola, Spain. And the goals of the Jesuits. First, they wanted to build Catholic schools. Education was important to Jesuits. In fact, today in the U.S., Jesuits run 45 high schools and 28 colleges, including Georgetown University in Washington, D.C., near us. The second goal of Jesuits was to convert non-Christians to Catholicism by traveling around the world on mission trips. And the third goal of Jesuits was to stop the spread of Protestantism.
How did reform and the Reformation change cultural values and traditions? Well, at first, the Reformation was divisive. It divided the countries of Europe on religious principles, leading to religious intolerance. This is a period when there are a lot of conflict and many wars. Eventually, after the conflicts, after the dust settled, there was growth in Europe. Individualism set in. People were starting to form their own ideas about religion. And the focus was more on the individual belief. Secularism. People started to realize they could educate themselves not just on church matters, but on different kinds of matters. Science, history, also tolerance. The Catholic Church grew to understand they needed to live with the ideas of Luther and Calvin. And if not fully embrace them, at least accept them and tolerate them. That took a long time for the church to come to grips with. We're almost done. Please answer your summary questions. Unit three explores the age of exploration. Until next time, this is Mr. Deegan signing off.